What is going on, Charles Botenston? And today we're going to be talking about real estate commissions, things that people don't want to talk about, whether it comes to brokerage or on, say, a listing appointment. You know, it's kind of one of those things that it's like the unspoken truth where a lot of people are like, ah, uh, 6%, so do I have to pay that? Well, let's go into it. Okay, so let's go into the, first of all, the series of events that happened in real estate that kind of led to this, which is the history of co-broking. So back in the day, 80s, uh, essentially, you went to a company and said, hi, Corcoran, Elliman, Brenhauer, Stevens, Halstead, BPI, whoever, big company back then, I'm looking to buy a house. And then you went to that real estate agent and essentially that real estate agent found all the listings out there and said, okay, actually at that company and said, okay, great. This is, and you would New York Times, this is available, blah, 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 is that you'd go in and you would say to that company, what do you have that I want? Then you essentially went to another company and they didn't really co-broke. Then the 90s came around and then the 90s said, okay, let's co-broke. So in other words, you had a buyer's agent and you had a seller's agent or a listing agent. Then now in the 2000s is that they just went directly. And obviously I wasn't talking about that there were no direct deals, but essentially because of the internet, which is great, it meritocrat meritocratized and democratized essentially the entire listings database. In other words, it was available on Trulia, Zillow, and StreetEasy, obviously Realtor.com. Then you have a couple of hot pads and you know rent.com you know there's a couple and obviously new york times which is kind of defunct database people still send their things now but as i left halstead actually halstead listings i don't think were listed on there anymore maybe they are maybe they're back on i have no idea but essentially when i was there five years ago they said well most of the traffic does not come from new york times so essentially nowadays a lot of people say okay well i could find this on the internet i could list it on the internet and i kind of don't need a real estate agent so why are you here why are you the middle person and if you think about it all the middle people have been cut out you don't need a travel agent if you want to go on a trip. You don't need a mortgage broker if you actually want to get a mortgage. You go directly to the bank. You don't need a stock broker if you want to buy stock. That's all online. So the internet has essentially just made an even playing field and that's essentially why I went out on my own. I said, listen, I don't need a big company. They're not hiring the company anymore like they were in the 80s and the 90s. They're hiring the company, the company that would put their, their listings and everything on a billboard or in the newspaper or a shopping cart. And now online, it's inexpensive. It's great. It's wonderful. My overhead is a lot less than what it would, would have been, say, 10 years ago. This is the thing, is now you have a lot of people that are entering the marketplace. There is a billion, tens of billion dollar commissions business up for grabs. And you have a lot of Silicon Valley, you have a lot of discount brokers, and you have a lot of full brokerages, full, full service brokerages. So let's talk about all three. So those are the three that I look at. The amount of for sale by owners has actually decreased, okay? So for sale by owners back in the day was that they had the time to do it, or they, people essentially advertised in the New York Times, or they put a sign outside, said this is available. I think it was 9% in like 20 years ago for sale by owners. So you put in your home on the market and now it's down to like six or 5% that successfully sell it. There's a lot of people that list, listen, I'm, I'm the first one to call for sale by owners. So I understand is that I would say in my percentage, I would say only about 10% of mine actually, actually no, less, probably 5% successfully sell it. Everyone else either takes their home off the market or they hire a real estate agent. Those are the three, those are the only choices. So you have the three choices right now, and I'm not talking about four sale by owners, I have the three broker types. So the first one is the Redfins, the Zillows, the Trulias, the, all the companies that are looking to either go around a broker or not have a broker. So in other words, they're essentially saying, give us the listing, we'll charge you a fixed fee of $500, and you either list it or we'll buy it at no charge, or it's gonna be a reduced charge, or we'll give you a portion of your money back. So in other words, you have that portion. What are the pros? Pros are pretty easy. You save a lot of money. The cons are obvious, is that you're either showing it, and by the way, that's kind of like me representing myself in court or me doing my own surgery. And obviously, yes, an attorney, I just compared real estate agents to an attorney and a doctor. That's not the same thing, obviously. But when, you're, when you consider it, between now until closing, there's a lot of things that come up that need to get negotiated. So if you're not in sales, you're not a good manager, you don't own your own company, it's really hard for people nowadays to be as bold, to ask for what they want. They accept a lot of things. There's, there's a couple of times I had an owner 
two weeks ago, literally was saying, yeah, that, that's fine, we'll accept that. And I was like, no, no we're not. They wanted to push back the closing. I said, no, we're not gonna push back the closing. A month ago, someone was talking about the price. They're like, yeah, we'll accept that. I'm like, I think we could get more. And essentially we got more. In other words, I know sales. I know the best brokers out there are really good salespeople. And this is the funny thing is, this is a little side tangent, is that for sale by owners, the ones that put a lot of their, for, their, their homes on the market as a for sale by owner are not the best salespeople. The people, so I'll visit a for sale by owner and they're like, here's the bathroom. I'm like, here's the bathroom. I'm like you have two sinks, a rain shower, beautiful marble flooring that looks like it was imported from Italy. I'm like, sell me on it. I'm like, come on now. But the best salespeople, ironically enough, I don't know why, they list with agents. I don't know why, it's, it's, it's an interesting concept. So you have the, the people that, and there's apps that we don't even know what's coming now. So there's probably something in five years that, that's gonna come out. Maybe it's blockchain, maybe it's something else that essentially makes it easier for consumers and buyers to come together. There's also services out there that they say your home is worth a million dollars, they'll give you 900,000 for a quick cash sale. But in New York City, that's never the case because you have boards to go through sometimes, but let alone a co-op. <laughs> That's, that's, that's always fun. So an LLC buying in the co-op just doesn't happen because you can't sue an LLC because obviously the pass-through sometimes is a little bit challenging to get to the individual. I would say there's probably gonna be 20, maybe 15% of the industry. Then you have discount brokers. So discount brokers say they're gonna be doing it for 2% or 1% or 3% total. And they'll give half of that or a percentage to obviously the other side if there is another side. The thing is most transactions that are going through now, I only have maybe 5% that are direct. Everyone else is co-broked. And the reason being is that buyers are actually saying, I don't wanna do this on my own. I need that. They're not even saying I need the objective point of view. They just don't wanna do it. And they also feel more comfortable. There, there's more of an emotional attachment to moving into a, moving through a transaction with someone else where you could ping it off them. If they're a single person or you know, it's someone that's outside of, obviously, New York City, they want to understand it. The ones that come direct, they've done multiple real estate transactions, they know what they want, and they're fine going without a broker. But most people, to be honest, if even if I'm buying in Hoboken, which is right over the river, it's literally, I can't see it because I have lights in front of my face, but I would hire a real estate agent out there because they know it. That's literally right there, and it's my industry. So the discount brokers, the pros are obviously a reduced compensation. They're probably gonna be listed in the RLS, which is essentially our MLS. So it's gonna be listed to all the brokers, and it's gonna be listed publicly to all the millions of people that go on StreetEasy, Zillow, Trulia, rent, realestate.com, rental.com, you know, all the other ones that nobody really cares about and nobody visits, but they still brag about on listing appointments. So I think that's probably gonna be about 30% of the industry within five years. So 20% is gonna be an app, it's gonna be you know flat rate, it's gonna be maybe 15%, and then probably whatever, it, this will probably be 50% of the marketplace, you know? And then 50% of the marketplace, this is five years out. So all the brokers that are yelling at me, listen, five years out, there's a lot of people that are going out on their own, they're starting their own teams. I think teams are gonna be the, the way to go for real estate brokers because you could say, here's our buyer's agent, here's our showing agent, here's our listing coordinator, here's our transaction coordinator, here's our marketer, here's our assistant, here's the rainmaker here are the people that make the sales calls and then that's going to be part of the traditional brokerage so in other words the the cons obviously are that you're going to be paying six percent the pros are that you're going to get the higher way higher price I can I can negotiate way better than the discount brokers and I'm gonna put more time into it because I'm getting paid more and obviously if you say this person's not worth it you're not gonna do business with me and you're not gonna send me any business as a referral so my incentive I'm not getting paid there is no paycheck in real estate so my incentive is to do the greatest job I can I want to exceed your expectations and so does every other full brokerage full service brokerage out there the ones in the middle they care, but they kind of say, listen, you know what you signed up for? You signed up for a discount brokerage. And then the other ones, you're kind of doing it on your own, or you're taking a cut that you understand is below market rate just for a fast transaction. The full service is what I want to focus on because there is, what, 35, 40,000 in New York City that are licensed. I think that's way too much. 
I think there's probably going to be a double, you know, Gary Keller was way, who started Keller Williams, was way bearish on the marketplace for real estate agents. So in other words, the amount of agents nationally, what is there like 5 million agents or whatever? I could be, you know, totally off, but National Association of Realtors has the, the current amount of people. The next downturn is going to wipe out hopefully about 10% of them. So 400,000 or 500,000 in nationally in New York City. I think it's going to go down even less because there is so much competition. There's so many people that are getting licensed and or uh, they just don't have the, the wherewithal to go out and eat what you kill. All right. So you go out and you only bring home $10,000. That's all you're living on there. And then you also that's before taxes. There is no monthly charge uh, or there's no money going towards health care, dental care, uh, IRA, retirement, savings. None of that. You have to do that on your own you're a 1040, okay, which is an independent contractor. So with the full, I'm, I'm just gonna end on this, with the full service, this is vitally important, is that you, I think in the future is gonna be just teams and it's gonna be rarely individuals. So in other words, the rich will get richer. In other words, the people who have the most listings will, will continuously get more listings because they're gonna be able to dial down a system that we, I have down to, you know, I, I don't have enough people on the team to essentially say, when I get a listing, this is exactly what happens. I do exactly what happens myself, but I'm gonna hire someone that, that says, you're gonna coordinate the photographer, the videographer, the floor plan person. You're gonna do all the showings. And you're gonna be, in other words, you're gonna have experts in each area and you're gonna replicate that every single transaction. And you're gonna make it easier. So I think it's gonna be, right now it's probably 90% full service business. Over the next five to 10 years, it's probably gonna drop down to about 70, maybe 65. And the discount will always be there. They're always going to be full service. And then you're, you're going to see a higher increase in the, the people that are doing a, a flat rate. They're doing, we'll buy it at a lower price, knowing you're getting at a lower price, but you're guaranteed a buyer. It's not even going to hit the market. Um, obviously, blockchain is, is going to get in there. People have to understand it and trust it, just like they do currency. Currency is a made up thing that we essentially, we, we all agree upon. So, you know, that, that's a great book is Sapiens. So that's, that's essentially the three that are going to happen. And the, the big portion is obviously the full service. That's going to dwindle a little bit. The discount is going to increase just a little bit. A lot of people are entering the discount, but the problem is you can't actually keep on paying interns and, and, and people that want more money. You can't keep on paying them less and have them work more. So they're going to be making less compensation. Obviously in New York City, it's very expensive. And then obviously the amount of apps and websites, Redfin and, and everything like that is going to be broadening. So I think that's going to be the future. If you guys have any questions or any topics you want me to talk about, obviously controversial and not com controversial, definitely here to talk about it. Leave your comments below. Have an amazing day. Talk to you guys soon.